child who basically gave her away. Yeah, and now she's all mine. Yeah? Listen, listen, she growls. It's a car already. I'll leave her here. Less likely to get dinged. Yeah. What? You, uh, you all right? You could have killed me. You didn't even look, you total half -brain. Oh, I looked. What about my car? About my bike. You're going to have to pay for the damage. Oh, no way. Right. I'm a police officer. Yeah? Well, so am I as it happens. You two haven't met yet, then? Hello, Polly. Huh? Rosie Fox, this is PC Eddie Santini. She's our new transfer. <laughs> oh, excellent. Uh, I'm Dave Quinnan. You, you all right, Rosie? Yes. Well, that looks like nasty greys, Rose. Let me take your bike for you, Rosie. Five years in the West End after you've done an MA at Cambridge. Well, in what? Religious studies. So who's she going out with? I thought Eddie could do the honours. Right. All done? Yes, Sarge. Do you fancy going for a drink after the shift? I... I've got a kind of rule about going out with colleagues. It can get very complicated, so... Uh... Right. Well, it's up to you. Oh, thanks, anyway. Forget it. <laughs> the lads are already squabbling over who gets first shot at her. She's not that stunning. Oh, yes, she is. And she's clever, too. Must be fit, all that biking. Mm. She gives you a very big bum. Hi. Are the showers in here? Down the corridor. Oh, thanks. It's a woman. All right, mate, if you wait there, we'll fetch. There, down there. She's not breathing. Right, give her a I can't get a pulse. Come on, get her out. Get her out all. Right, you give her a mouth to mouth, I'll do a chest. Right. Right, ready? Yep. One, two, three, four. Five. There's a faint pulse. Well? Nothing. One, two, three, four, five. Anything? I think she's a goner. Where's the ambulance? One, two, three, four, five. Come on, girl, come on. I don't think she's gonna make it. Keep it going. One, two, three, here they are. Four, five. Oh. Sorry, too late. Nice try, Vic. The informed is a Mr. Broom. We'll receive side. Show us to your I'll uh, pay for the bike. Oh, uh, it's okay. I've got a spare wheel, I can probably fix it myself. Ah, uh, it's up to you. Sergeant Boyden was telling us about the MA and all that, so, uh, you religious? No, I was into the philosophy and psychology of religion more than practice. Right. What are you interested in? Oh, you know, the kind of things thick people like cars, football, sex. Right. I'll go first, Rose, but. Rosie's fine. Fine. You can't walk in here telling me who I can or can't employ. He's a danger to everybody in the community. Oh, he's driving a delivery van. I've got a right to do a job. Not in Sunny, you haven't. All right, all right. 
What's going on? Which one of you is Mr. Broom? Me. This nutter is trespassing. Plus, he has threatened me and my employee, Mr. Cookson here. Oh, what's the problem, Mr. Piper? He wants locking up, that's his problem. No, I'm glad you're here. It's about time the police got involved. This piece of filth murdered my son and destroyed my whole family. And I want something done about it. There's no idea except for the tattoo. And no obvious injuries. Doesn't look like she's been in long. Three or four hours maximum. The FME's here. If she's a jumper, she could well have got off Shadwell Bridge last night. Time and tide's about right. Yeah, favourite spot. Mm. Plus there's all those crash houses and hostels up on Brim Street. Full of homeless. And addicts. Nice looking one though. She's awfully thin. Expensive clothes though. Oh, I hate suicides. Yeah, I know. Need your complaints all the way. I was 19. I got needled into a knife fight with his 14-year-old. Viciously on that it's not got life. So you're out on license? Yeah. Can't he's do anything. Piper's handy. He's been on my case since the day I got out. It's a waste to go around here, go somewhere else. Why should I? Come on, then. <laughs> you keeping him on? Yeah. Could be aggravation. I'm not doing out of charity, I've got a lot on. Plus, he doesn't mind what I put in. Right. I think these gentlemen have calmed down, yes? Yeah. I never wanted any trouble. Well, if we're called out again and you waste any more of our time, you could be arrested, do you understand? Yeah. OK, I'm going. Good. I hope he was listening. Not sure I would if I was him. Oh, anything at the bridge? No. Right, you better enforce it, I do. Sarge, we better check the 584s first. I wonder how Eddie's getting on with Rose. What about your body? Close as you'll ever get, George. Well, listen, uh, how's Eddie and Roger getting on it? Hasn't anybody got anything else to talk about? Bring back the death penalty for murderers, more of a deterrent. Well, it doesn't work in the States. Well, septics are different. Septics? Septic tank, yank. I suppose they don't teach you slang at Cambridge. 86 on Sierra Oscar, you're receiving. Go ahead, Sarge. The primary school at the top of Waybank Road. There's a disturbance outside. Two males involved. One of them's a Mr. Piper. Your little chat must have been dead effective then. Uh, you get your own. Here, have either of you seen the new WPC yet? Yeah. No. Well, good or bad? Totally edible. <laughs> you talking about Rosie Fox? Uh huh. Do you know her? Yeah, I do actually. I did a course with her a couple of years ago. And no, I'm not going to give you her telephone number. I'll get it from Cad then. <laughs> and I'll get it off you. <laughs> Liz, you got a second? Yeah, of course. Do you remember that 584 on Tracy Keller? Yeah, about a week ago. She was friendly with an ex-informant of mine. Well, we've just pulled a girl out of the river who fits the description. Mine was a junkie, good-looking. Had a little flower tattooed on her ankle. Yeah. Come on in, mate! Oh, just leave me alone, you Come on in! Come on in! Just leave me alone! Come on! Just leave me alone! Leave me alone. But he's been in there, where I deliver. He's telling them my child murderer. That's what you are! You! Over here. Do you want Mr Piper charged with assault? No. Just make things worse. He's an evil old head case. Wouldn't it be easier if you settled in a different area, away from all this? I was born in Sun Hill. Mr Piper told me your family moved away. Oh, they moved away. Died in a car accident. I wasn't allowed out for the funeral. But if your family's gone, there's even less reason. No, you don't understand. I was 19. They stuck me away in a box for 13 years, just left me. My folks died. My friends stopped visiting. It's like... It's like getting invisible. I'm all right in the van, I'm on my own, but... I'll go places I know, see the odd face I recognise. I mean, it's a dump, but... It's the only place where anyone ever knew that I existed. Oh, 
And why should I make it easy for him? Look, I can understand how you feel. Look, if it was me and my family, I wouldn't want him around here. But one more of these and you're going to end up in a cell, Mr. Baby. Yeah? Are you hearing me? You could do something. Just let it go now, all right? Go home. Last warning. I don't think he deserves what he's getting. Yeah, he only murdered someone. My heart bleeds for him. He's paid for it. Not yet. He's on license. All he has to do is lose it once with Piper and they could have him straight back inside. And he's more or less asking for it staying here. Whatever he did, he's still got rights, I did. Oh, what's that? Something you learned at the university? That chip in his shoulder permanent, and you take it off on rest days? I don't know what you're talking about. I think people often have trouble understanding. Bog off. Often have trouble communicating as well. You want to be careful, Rosebud. Yeah? Why is that? Being a smug, stuck-up car doesn't impress me, and I doubt I'll make you too many friends on the team, either. Her name's Tracy Keller. No family. Right, there are still tests we're waiting for results on. But the actual cause of death wasn't drowning. It was a huge heroin overdose suffered immediately before she went into the water. What, so she was down by the river injecting herself and... The heroin wasn't injected. She was carrying a large quantity internally in condoms. One of them was ruptured. I'm fairly certain she fell into the river from quite a height. There are marks on her back from the impact. Would the fall have ruptured the condom? Now, as I said, the overdose occurred before she went into the water. But she also had pressure bruises on her arms and back of the neck. It's quite likely she was involved in some kind of struggle. So if she was hit in the stomach? Or fell against something, could have been enough to burst the condom and kill her in seconds, more or less. Get in a minute, will you? I was going to call you. One of the girls, Maggie, told me that Tracy turned up again last night. Bellman took her off in his car about 11 o'clock. Uniform pulled her out the river this morning. What? She had 20 grand's worth of heroin in her stomach. Some of it leaked. We still don't know whether she fell in or she was pushed. Who's Bellman? He owns the hostel next door. Are oh, you all right, Rosie? Hi, Luke. How's it going, Rosie? Hi. Mm -hmm. Hi, Rosie. Hi. Do you want a cup of tea? A cough. Is it love or war? Ah, she thinks a lot of herself. Well, wouldn't you? She attached. Well, I'm nasty yet. Yeah? Hey, Rosie. Rosie, Eddie's desperate to know if you're available. Oh, I thought he was just desperate. He <laughs> is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not hungry. I'm going to the rec room. Oh, come on! Must be love. I'm Detective Inspector Deacon. This is WDC Rawton from Sandhill. Are you the owner of the hostel? Yeah. Clive Bellman. How can I help? We're making some inquiries about a girl who was found dead this morning. We think she may have lived locally. Yeah. Tracy Keller. Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah, she lives here. At least she did, anyway. She went missing, what, a week or so ago, out of the blue? No explanation? No. Can I have a look at her room? Talk to her friends? Yeah, sure. I don't know about friends. Most of the residents here keep themselves to themselves. Did you know she was a heroin addict? Oh, Mrs. Let me get that see-through look. A few of the girls here are users. And that doesn't bother you? I do run this place for profit, but it doesn't mean I have to be narrow-minded about it. How'd you die? Looks like suicide. Oh, shame. I'll leave you to it, then. He's very relaxed. Yeah, dead cool. What do you reckon? Well, well he's absolutely straight. Or he's up to his neck in it. Well, there's nothing here. Apart from the usual works, everything's been cleaned up and put away. Not even a full ash tree. Well, maybe somebody cleared up after she'd gone. Why? Unless they knew she wasn't coming back.
Has someone cleaned up Tracy's room since she left, Mr. Bellman? It looks very tidy. No, no, not as far as I know. She was a particularly tidy junkie. All right, Miss Bellman, thank you. Okay, not at all. Oh, listen, is it all right if I clear the rest of her stuff out? I'd quite like to rent out the room again, if that's possible. It's up to you. If you'd bundle up her belongings and keep hold of them for now, I might need to look at them later. Okay, thank you. He's up to his neck, isn't it? There you go. That's the way to do it. Eddie, play the winner. No, thanks, mate. Oh, come on. Not in the mood. Changed me since this morning, hasn't he? Yeah. Oh, are you, Rosie? You fancy a game? After work, sure. Mm, terrific. You ready? You two on the way out, then? Yep. We'd better get over to the Princess Royal, then. You'll make Martin Cook and make a nuisance of himself again. And can you get it sorted this time? What do you reckon, then? Castration? Or should I set fire to myself out there in public? Would that satisfy them? I've tried. He won't, Roger. Come on, Mr Cookson, let's take you home. Well, I've got a home to go to, have I? He's been to my landlady. I've got to... Tell me where he lives. He can't do this to me. All right, mates. Out. Now. Do you want to be arrested? Wait a minute, Eddie. Please give me three days to get out. We've had enough of you. It's worse outside than in prison. Where'd you live, Martin? Go on, then. Go and sleep it off. This is a final warning, Martin. Next time we'll arrest you. I won't let Piper win. Go away. That was clever. He deserved to be nicked. He deserves a chance to get on with his life in peace. No, you see, Piper and his family are the ones who deserve some peace. Right, Let's pay Mr Piper and his family a visit. No, not our job, Rose, but... It will be if it ends up with someone getting hurt. But haven't you had enough? I'd rather catch villains and do house calls. All right, drop me off there. I'll talk to the Pipers. You go hunt down hardline knicker thieves in the mouth. Well, we think Bellman's got to be involved, Gov. Kim always reckoned he sold the hostel girls a bit of smack along with their accommodation. Now, if he's moved up a gear and started using them to career heroin, that would fit with everything we've got so far. Tracy's disappearance and death, her clothes, Kim's information, the hostel girls. We need an inside track, though. Bellman's canny. Any relevant previous? No, he's a jack of all trades. Receiving, fraud. We haven't caught him on anything serious, though. What about your informant? Couldn't she help? Ex-informant. No, I don't think she'd do it, Gov. Not on her own, anyway. We need someone inside the hostel. What, undercover? Well, that could be difficult. Well, it's too late to call in Lasso 11. There's a new WPC downstairs. I know her. She's a new face and she's a good copper, too. What, the Oxbridge girl with the eyes? Bellman's lot are all homeless junkies and Tom's on a day off. She's got five years' experience in the job, Gov. She'd need a partner. What, a girlfriend or something? The bloke would be better. You're wasting your time. No, I'm not. Cook's a little crap before Piper does. Do you ever let up? No. I'll tell you something, though. What? You're prettier when you're angry. I'll call you when I'm finished. You can come and pick me up. No, whatever you say, Rosebud. You do your thing, and I'll do mine. You're looking for Mr. Piper? Yes, or Mrs. Piper. You won't find her there. He's all on his own, has been for years. All oh, right. I got the impression he had quite a lot of family in the area. He used to, years ago. When his son was killed, the rest of the family blamed Mr. Piper for stirring things up. They moved away and left him, poor beggar. Hello, Eddie. How's it going, eh? Hey, fair to million there, yeah. You got a sec? Sure. Something up? Ah, it's nothing major. I've just got this little problem locally. I wondered if you could help me out. Nine eight eight from four eight seven receiving. Four eight seven from Sierra Oscar. Eddie's got his radio off for a bit. Home visit, Rosie. OK, thanks. Mr Cookson? Yeah. That your van parked there? 
From distribution? Yeah. You'll have to move it, sir. Gaspol's doing some work in the road overnight. No. Straight away, please, sir. Or you'll be towed. You're supposed to be sleeping it off, Mr. Cookson. What? People who've been in the pub shouldn't be driving. But I was told to move it. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to ask you to take a breath test, I'm afraid. Oh, no way, no way. It was a copper. He told me the gas well, I'm sorry, but just blow in the end, yeah? Hi. Hi. Seen Eddie? He's in custody with a prisoner. Stupid. It's supposed to be a new machine. I think it's 20 P's only. Yeah. Oh, I haven't got an MA. I've never ever worked that out for myself. Cheers. You're welcome. Right. You'll be put in the cell until we've done a bail inquiry this way. You tug to scumbag. You set me up! You set me up for this! It's a live one. Fighting drugs, Sarge. You stitched me! The worst of Piper, you fell! Let me the old you! I want a word in here. Ooh, be gentle with me, Rosebud. It's Rosie. Where have you been? I had to walk all the way back from the Pipers. Oh, sorry, yeah. I was busy doing police work. Yeah, which of Bren's most wanted did you manage to notch up while I was away? Just the wandering driver. Oh, fantastic work. Well, it wasn't hard, you know. I spotted Cookson get into his van with that skin fully out in him. You what? He'll lose his job. They could have him back inside, and you know that. Yeah, shame. What were you doing back over at Cookson's, anyway? Taking a leaf out of your book, Rose, but I was going to have a word with him. You set him up? He set himself up. You bastard! Well, you see, my friends usually call me clever bastard. You're just unbelievable. Wait till you get to know me. You really fancy yourself, don't you, Eddie? Well, I fancy you more. Look at those smouldering eyes. Oh, piss off. Ooh, whatever you say, Rosebud. Your wish is ever my command. I was just looking for you. Hi, sorry, Liz. I haven't had time to come and say hello yet. Actually, I wanted to talk to you about a job. I know it's your first day, but we need a new face for some undercover work. Thought you might be interested. Yeah, great. I would. We're yeah. planning to ask Eddie Santini to partner you on it. Eddie? Is that a problem? Uh, no. No, it's fine. Well, nothing I can't handle anyway. Good. Hey, guess what I've just been offered? Don't accept it. It'll be illegal. Ah, it's not a moody VCR. It's a CID job, right? Undercover. And <laughs> it gets better. It's going to be me and Rosebud working together in perfect harmony. I thought you didn't like her. But I'm keeping my options open. She doesn't like you. <laughs> That's just the way some girls like to play it, pretend they hate you when they're gagging for it. Oh, I say what, the infinite mystery is a woman kind, eh? Yeah. I wouldn't mind unravelling a few of Rosebuds. Ah, go for it. I will, Dave. I will. Top of the morning, Rosebud. Hi. How's the neck? It's fine. Why? Well, it's holding up that brain all day. It must be a strain. Oh, very funny. You're just passing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've been to get the scratches looked on the motor. You got your bike sorted out there? Yeah, it's fine. How's your coffee? Oh, no thanks. Too hot. Look, we're going to be working together on this op. I thought it might be nice, you know, if we got to know each other a bit first. Now's not a good time, Ed. Well, look. I can understand you being wound up about yesterday. I'm not wound up. But I want you to know it's going to be teamwork all the way on this job. All oh, right. Yeah. What makes it different from yesterday? 
So why don't we just forget about yesterday and start year zero, eh? All right, Ed. Year zero. Good. Now do you fancy a drink? Still got things to do. See you later. Yeah, sure. Bet this is for the yacht. A bit rich, Rosie getting whisked off by CID on her first day. She doesn't even know her way around the station yet. Well, they needed a new face. Well, I'm not exactly part of the furniture around here. You never get recognised without the woolly pulley in any case. That's true. Hey, is this new look you're sporting, Rod? <laughs> Why do I always get the rubbish ops? It's a bit rough on the image, isn't it? All right, you two. I've just spoken to Mr and Mrs Jolliffe. They're very enthusiastic. I prefer the ones who disappear and leave you to it myself. Oh, come on, Rod. It's a good op. Nice, discreet back entrance. Decent couple. Stop moaning. Hi, oh, Rosie. Oh, sorry, I've forgotten your name. I've met so many people yesterday. It's on Tom. Tom, hi. <laughs> See you later, Rosie. Bye. Tom, Tom. Right. Have you decided what role Eddie's playing yet? I assume I'll be taking a room at this hostel. Yeah, well, that's the idea, eventually. In the day, I was thinking about a Tom-Pimp relationship. Oh, right. That way, once you're established on the plot, Eddie can come and go as we like. Sounds sensible. Are you sure I'm up to this, Liz? Yeah. Yeah, of course I am. Come on. Stand painting. We're well, getting the decorators in anyway, so it's good cover. Yeah, well, the shoulder always plays up when I do the rolling. What's this, a bad air day? Come in, come in, welcome. I'm Bruce. DC prop to DC skates, I presume. Spot on. I had a full description from Liz. Detective Constable Rodman? Right, well, if you follow me, I'll show you around the quarters. I'm afraid Maria's had to go off to work, so I'm OC Works and Hospitality for now. We started clearing the front room for you, but there's still a bit to do, I'm afraid. Uh, I'm not much use on this when I've got my arms full. Tom, movement on plot. I suppose I should leave you to it. Spellman. Who's the girl? I don't know, but she don't look very happy. <sighs> She's boring. What's the book about? Uh, it's a bit difficult to explain. To someone with only four GCSEs. Have a tea, please, love. Aren't you two supposed to be in a briefing? Oh, so Miss Club, so I should gonna let us know when they're ready. Made it up with Rosie, have you? Yeah, yeah, we're cool. Could even uh, be a tiny spark of interest flying my way. I wouldn't count on it. How come? She told me yesterday she normally doesn't go out with her workmates. Well, what made her volunteer that information? You're not the only bloke in this nick capable of trying it on. Yeah, well, she's not likely to end up as a station bike, is she? Cambridge girl, yeah. She's used to picking and choosing. Doesn't quite gel with the cover Liz and the DI have got planned for her. What? A Tom. One of Brim Street's finest. No, not her style. It's amazing how adaptable women can be. What was all that about? Nothing. It didn't look like nothing. Were you talking about me? She, not everything revolves around you, Rosebud. All right. I spoke to Kim. The girl on the video was Maggie Shelton, the one who saw Bellman and Tracy Keller arguing at the hostel the night she died. So what's he up to? Covering his tracks? Possibly. We've got to keep moving on this, Gov. I know that. And we don't know for sure that Bellman Susty was seen with Tracy. You're making an assumption. The DCI is concerned that Rosie's going to be able to handle Bellman anyway. And I'm not going to take any risk sending her in there if Bellman's already smelt a rat. So what do you want me to do? Stand them down? Get Eddie and Rosie working on their characters and we'll give it a couple of hours. See if Maggie turns up. All right, Gov.
Ah, nice guy. That's what you're up against. Right, okay, so I'm a Tom. Why? I mean, couldn't you just be new to the area or something? I'd make a great prostitute. You're gonna show out? I'll show out if I'm too respectable, Ed. Yeah, well, that's my point. If we're gonna convince anyone we've got work to do, hair, clothes, etc. I've got some stuff. I don't think the Cambridge look is gonna quite cut it on Brim Street, Rosebud. I wasn't planning to attract Bellman's attention in my gown and mortarboard. All right, keep your briefs on. And you two just stop squabbling. I've seen Rosie dressed up for a night out. I don't think she'll have any problem looking the part. Well, if she's a Tom, what am I then? One of her punters? The day I want you to be an overprotective pimp. Yeah, makes some sense. I think he should be my ex pimp or someone I'm trying to get away from, otherwise, it could put Bellman off. Yeah, good point. Okay, so you're a Tom. That means you're going to be a smack addict as well, most likely. No way. I'm hardly going to impress him if I'm a stupid smackhead, am I? Oh, you're the one with the MA, Rose, but you tell me. Look, will you just pack it in? We've got enough problems. Might be better all around if we did get stood down. Everybody happy? Fine. Go. I've just had a DCI on from Heathrow. They've got Tracy Keller on tape, boarding a flight to Budapest ten days ago. The ID key from Carver, over. Right, Jim. Target's just turned up at his home address, Gov. Is the lady he went with still with him? No, stand by. Target's back out and on the move. He's got some sort of luggage with him. More tea for anyone? No, thanks. Right. Sad case. Don't knock him, Rod. He fought for his country. <laughs> what? Well, Captain Hogwash? Yeah, right. Probably swap the decks or do whatever they do. You're a git, Rod. And I love you too, Tom. Hang on. It's our redhead. She's back. So good, is she? Do you think they're going to be ready? Well, we'll have to keep it simple at first, but that could be a good thing. Allow us to fine tune later. What was the aggravation about earlier on? <sighs> they're just wound up about the job, Gov, that's all. They'll be fine. Yeah, because we've got one dead girl, one girl beaten up. It's a dangerous job we're sending Rosie on. The one thing we really don't need is squabbles. I'll keep my eye up. Right. A couple of developments. First, the girl on the video has turned up back at the pub with a couple of black eyes. Kim said she was caught stealing money from Bellman's pocket. He found out about it. And Jim has called in from Heathrow. Bellman has checked into a flight to Budapest, the same destination as Keller. This could be a really good opportunity for us. If we introduce you today at the pub, we can take what time he's near him before you even have to deal with Bellman. Could take the pressure off all round. That's if you're up for it. Sure. Yeah, all right. No, Vicky reckons Rose is not up to it. No, Vicky just wants to be top girl, that's all. All units from Sierra Oscar. Message from DID Kin. Their plot going live as of now, so we need to keep a low profile in and around six feet. Oscar out. That was quick. Eddie and Rosie out to play. Yeah, I could have done with some of that. What, you and Rosie? Do us a favour. No, no, they're the job. Anyway, Eddie's not interested. He's just winding her up. Ah, uh, you're wrong there, mate. He's totally smitten. Classy with a touch of plebeian overstatement, yeah? Yeah. It's you all over. Very good, Eddie. What do you reckon? Good enough? I don't know. Well, let me know when I get something right. You look great. Don't worry about it. Right, I've, uh, I've warned Rod and Tom. Uh, <laughs> Rosie will be going into the pub for a couple of hours to make herself known to the girls. And then we're going to meet up back at Kim's at half past eight. Well, don't you think you should tone it down a bit, Gov? Look a bit less... Fuck off, Eddie. An hour ago you were telling me I'd never convince anyone. Can we just get on with it? It's got a point, you know, Eddie. You two, kiss and make up. There is no room for personality clashes in this.
I'll see you back at Kim's at 8, yeah? Yeah. Look out, we've got an audience. It's over, Eddie. You're not my keeper anymore, so just piss off you and leave me alone. just listen for a sec. I've done that for too long already. Be careful. You stupid bitch! Oh, look, don't look. That's, that's Eddie. What a formal name. George! Oh! Rosie, what are you doing here? Finally seen the light and ditch, Daddy. I need a drink. What do you have? Rum and coke. Without the wrong place. Good entrance. They noticed. Watch it down. I think we got away with it. You see that bird, George? You nearly broadsided me. Yeah, well, you're okay, aren't you? Liz, target's back. Hey, you can't be, man. He's halfway on his way to the bloody Danube. Well, she's, she'll blow it. She's not ready. We'll have to get her out. Don't panic. Well, we've only had half a briefing. She doesn't even know exactly who she's supposed to be. All right, it's going into the pub. Well, I'm going to get her out. Hey, just wait there. I'll go and phone the governor. Hello. Hello, Thought you'd left the country. Oh, uh, yeah, well, flight was delayed, then somebody else blew up this end anyway. Had to reschedule. Large one? Yes, please. Oh, I've earned it. Hello. Hello, who are you? Wife, Rosie, old mate. We were at school together. You're staying at mine for a few days till she finds a place. You want to join me for a drink, Rose? I've got one, thanks. Oh, well, I'll come up to you then. Smoke? No. Not one of your vices, eh? No. Not anymore. You don't live locally. No, I, I came to see Kim. Yeah, she said. She let me stay for a few days while I find a place. Yeah, she said. Cheers. I... Kim mentioned you had a place. A hostel next door. Is she? She's quick off the mark. Unfortunately, it's full right now. Oh, I thought I'd ask. That's no problem. You seem a bit nervous, Rosie. Why's that? I am... Um, I'm not the best company right now. Basically, I've been really screwed around recently. But I'm not going to lay it on you. Kim's already had an earful, so feel free to leave me drowning in self-pity. Yeah, I wouldn't want to do that. You're too pretty to die young. So what are your plans for the evening, Rosie? I'm going to drip myself into a corner for a while. <laughs> Slag. What? Get outside, man. I want to talk to you. In fact, better yet, get your bags, say goodbye to your little friend here, and let's go home. I'm not going anywhere. And this is? Eddie, my ex-boyfriend. Come on, Rosie. No. Don't play games with me. You owe me. I don't owe you anything. I'm a free agent. You're finished. Give me... Get off. Hey, Eddie, get off. Eddie. People are trying to relax in here. You coming with me? No. I'm not going without you. Get the message, Ed. You don't give me orders and I don't take them. Sorry. Stop apologising. You did fine. Go and see the problem. He thinks he owns me. Look, I think I understand the situation. Look, relax. Have another drink. Yeah, things can only get better, huh? Thanks, I will. He's out. Where's Rosie then? He's cocked it up, hasn't he? What a prat. She completely blanked me. I gave her the whole bit, told her to leave with me, and she refused. Well, she's the one in at the deep end. Dog, she doesn't even know where the deep end is. Eddie, she's the officer undercover. She has to call it. Problem wearing females on a job. You've always got to keep one eye on them along with everything else. All right, tell me about it. Did she look like she was handling him? Hard to tell. I was too busy getting the red card. I, I suppose so. 
So what's the problem? So you're a woman of the world now, eh? That's the polite way of putting it. Oh, come on, don't put yourself down. I learned a lot from Eddie in a way. I don't believe dope turns into a maniac. I don't believe good guys always win. You're mm, very sensible. I'm hungry, Kimberly. What have you got for me? Everything on the board's fresh. How about you, Rosie? You hungry? Sure. I'm not in a hurry. Eddie, will you just go and sit down? You're getting on my nerves. Paint a wall or something. Uh, she's supposed to be there for a couple of hours, not all night. But she's probably making progress. It's only 20 minutes till closing. We might as well make a move. No, I'll wait till she's out. All right, I'll see you back at Kim's. Thanks, Clive. You've been really nice. You've stopped apologising. I can stop saying thank you. I'm still a bit nervous around nice guys. <laughs> What makes you think I'm a nice guy? Aren't you? Yeah. Could be even nicer, I could organise your room. I thought you were full at the hostel. Well, actually, there's one just come free. The occupants left all their stuff there. I just haven't finished clearing it up. Oh, that's great. It'll be nice not to have to put Kim out for too long. Yeah. Okay, well, look, you've got your gear here. I could sort you out to move in tonight. Uh, sure. Why not? <laughs> Everything okay here? Great. Clive just offered me a room at the hostel. He's gonna move me in now. What? She's my oldest mate, you lech. Don't even get her for one night. Look, maybe, Clive, can I move in tomorrow instead if it's still all right? Yeah, all right. Yeah, whenever you like. Eddie. Bad time. Thanks again, Clive, for cheering up my evening and for the room. <laughs> I'll get a thank you kiss. Oh, look at that. Well, she's got staying power, hasn't she? It's better than working for a living, isn't it? Right, I'm out of here. What's the matter, Eddie? What, what, you, what, you want to stay and watch the end of this? I'll see you later. Yeah, that was pretty good. I could be coming back for more. Um, you free for lunch tomorrow? Yeah? <laughs> OK, I'll see you here. One o'clock. And then, you know, after you settled in the hostel. Look forward to it. OK. It's a long goodbye. I'm just glad it was goodbye. Everything OK? Got enough room? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Sorry about the crash. <laughs> All Bruce's mementos. <laughs> We'll be fine. Right, uh, I'm off to do my ablutions. Sweet dreams. Good night. Good night. Oh, I need some sleep. I'm knackered. Look at it. It's like the Bates Motel in here. Captain Hogwash and his murky past. I'll let up a bit, Rod. Maria's really nice. Yeah. Oh, wow, man, look at this. This is a classic, you know. This is uh, the USS Enterprise. All right. Where are the photon torpedoes? Uh? Turn the light back on. Oh, I could have hugged you when you came back. They said he'd take me straight to the hostel. You should have seen the look you gave me. I wasn't ready for a night fighting Clive off. Oh, don't blame me. It was fast even for him. He wants to meet me tomorrow at the pub as well. What? Wow. I don't know. I suddenly thought... What? I must have been imagining it. Oh, don't spook me. I'm not. I just... This happened to Tracy. What? Well, she thought she was being followed, too. Half an hour. What are they doing? Late night window shopping, I suppose. Here they are. You're late. Nice to see you, too. I thought we were being followed, so we took the long route. I think I was imagining it, though. Well, you're here now. How'd it go? I was a bit thrown at first, but I think he liked me. Yeah, uh, we noticed. 
He's offered me Tracy's room at the hostel. Creepy. Plus, he's invited me to lunch tomorrow. Well, that's excellent, Rosie. Well done. That's better than we could have hoped for. So Eddie going in didn't spoil anything? No, spot on. Broke the ice with Bellman. You were perfect, darling. Ah, oh, I'm always perfect. Right, well, it's late now, so we'll debrief tomorrow before you go back in. Well done, guys. You too. Come on, Ed. We did really well. Yeah, well, you did. What was it like having Bellman's tongue down your throat for ten minutes? Orgasmic. Mm. I'll get it. You're Chris Deacon? Yeah. The eye John Hatfield from Cirque's. Sorry to bust in on you like this, but I think we've got a conflict of interest situation to sort out. This is Detective Inspector Hadfield from Cirque's. My team's in the middle of an investigation into a heroin importer by the name of Rushkov. Never heard of him. Well, Clyde Bellman has. Rushkov is the man he's working for. Doing what? Organising his drug couriers. We first spotted Bellman a couple of weeks ago. We put the hostel under surveillance. Found he's been recruiting his tenants there. Then we saw your girl with him tonight. We thought you were another Tom until we put a call into your DCI. So what are you going to do? Well, we're very close. We'll have to ask you to clear the field for us. How close are you? We've got everything we want in his organisation and methods. We just need to connect him evidentially to Bellman and the girls. Bellman has offered Rosie a room in his hostel for tomorrow night. Now, it's going to be much easier for her to get the concrete information that you need against Rushkov than anything else you have. We're suggesting a joint op. Gov, Rosie's not anywhere near experienced enough. I can handle it, Gov. We pool information, resources, you get Rushkov, we get Bellman. Everyone's happy. I'm ready to give it a go, sir. Well, subject approval, you got a deal. Great. Great. Tell me more about this Rushkov. You're crazy, Rosebud. These are seriously dangerous characters. Villains normally are, Ed. What's the problem? You're acting like my dad. Well, there's nothing wrong with being worried about you. I'm a grown-up girl, Ed. I can look after myself, OK? It's our virtual team member. I love the outfit. Good morning, Vicky. How's it going with Eddie? Fine, pretty good. Well, there you are, Rosebud. Are they waiting for me? Ah, the eyes just arrived. I didn't get much sleep last night. <laughs> Well, I'm surprised you had any energy left after yesterday. That wasn't what I meant. Good. Right, well, we'll get on with it. Right, morning, everybody. Morning. morning. Now, as you know, last night our operation unexpectedly crashed into a Cirque's job involving a Russian smack dealer by the name of Rushkov. Now, there, D.I. and myself worked out a joint arrangement whereby we divvy up the spoils. But, this morning, Mr. Meadows has had a word with the Cirque's DCI and they put the mockers on it. Why? They don't think you're up to handling Rushkov. They don't know anything about me, Gov. I've had the arguments, but I've lost the battle. They're pulling us out. So, Jim, you can stand down. Rod, Tom, if you stay on the elbow until we can pull Rosie out of the situation, OK? That's it. Let's get on. Right, Eddie, Rosie. Now, Liz will brief you before you go back in, but basically you'll have to affect some sort of reconciliation over the next couple of days. So I'm still moving into the hostel now? Yeah, but softly, softly with Bellman until Eddie can sort out this reconciliation business. OK, Gov. Old hot wash will be gutted. You've got that leg injury fighting in the Falklands, you know. Yeah, right. Eyes down, curtains richer at three o'clock. Morning, my friends. Come in. Coffee's all ready. Morning, Maria. Morning, Rodney. Tom. How was the briefing? Uh, are we making progress? Yes and no. There's been a technical hitch. Other officers will be taking over the ops, and we've got to close down and leave it to it, I'm afraid. Oh. I see. Why? No. No, of course. You can't tell us. Well, anyway, we'll be here for the next couple of days. So. Well, that's something, isn't it? We'll have to make the most of you while you are here. <laughs> You've got no wire or anything. How will we know if there's trouble? Ed, for the end of the time, I'm a grown-up. I'll be OK. You're turning into my dad again. We should have some kind of signal. What? OK, I'll send up smoke or run up a flag. Or maybe you could teach me some semaphore. How about that? It's been really good working with you, Rosebud. You're a world-class revisionist, Ed. You know that. Anyway, it's not over yet. Oh, look, the happy couple. Yeah, when Eddie met Rosie. Can't think what he sees in her. Oh, she's different, isn't she? Yeah, Vicky, I'll tell you what it is, love. It's the attraction of the opposites. You see, cosmically speaking, it's a pattern that's repeated worldwide. You've been reading too many of those women's magazines again, Rich. 
You're back early, what's up? Yeah, the off's gone belly up. Someone screw up. Nothing to do with us. I'll see you later, yeah? Snipe cat. More cocoa to the bridge. <sighs> Maria's cooking you something nice for lunch before she has to go off to work. Oh, great. Um, I was going to ask you. Yeah? I read recently they're recruiting a lot of civilians into the police these days for uh, intelligence work, that sort of thing. Well, I'm no use on the barricades anymore with my leg, but uh, I started off in intelligence before I moved over to combat duties. I think that's your target arriving now. Do you need Rod? He's helping Maria with the carrots. Thanks, Bruce. Hi, Kim. Hello, gorgeous. Hi. I'll see you inside. Looking good. Below me. Uh, pop this one for you later, yeah? Fancy coffee and a brandy for you, Ruben? Why not? I was talking about you to an associate of mine this morning. Oh? A reference some work. I might be able to put you away. Oh, right. What kind of work? It's highly paid. Interesting. Includes foreign travel. Is it legal? Would it bother you if it wasn't? No. From now on, I just want to keep my eyes open about what I'm getting into. Very sensible. So, anyway, as I said, I talked to my associate this morning. We had a problem with one of our operators. We've got a tough delivery schedule to meet. We're anxious to fill the position as soon as possible. What position? I spoke to my associate about you and he wants to meet you. Okay. Have you ever been abroad, Rosie? You're upon a holiday, that kind of thing. You're born in the UK? Yeah. Tap. You've been arrested? Stop to customs? No, why? But it's just basic stuff we need to know. Oh, well, you haven't told me what the position is yet. No, I'd like you to meet my associate first. He's invited us right to his restaurant tonight. Tonight? Problem with that? There's Eddie. Yeah, I know. He called me at Kim's last night, but I told him I'd accept you the room at the hostel. What makes you think I've got what you and your associate need? Well, essentially, it's about image, confidence, carrying off a roll. Right clothes, right accessories, I think you do really well. Satisfy you? For now. Movement on the plot. Targeting Rosie out of the pub. Oh, look where he's got his hand. She's supposed to be backing off. Hi. Here we go. I've moved most of the other girls' stuff. There's still a few bits and bobs left. All right. It's great. Who was she? The girl who was here before. Someone called Tracy. Did she move out? She committed suicide. Why? I'm full of questions today. Um, I'm sorry. I'm feeling much better. Even one night away from Eddie really recharges my batteries. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Right. I'd better unpack. Well, why don't you do that later? Going out tonight, I need hours to get ready. No. No, you don't. What are you doing? Developing our relationship? Is that part of my terms and conditions? Oh, don't panic, Rosie. I'm not panicking. Look, I'm not Eddie. I respect you. And also, very attracted to you. You know that anyway. It's not against the rules, is it? I'm still writing new ones. Well, while you're thinking about it, um, 
I need to take a shower. If you like. Left up the corridor, second door, down below. See someone moving around inside. Doesn't look like Rosie. I think it's Bellman. Yeah, it's him. I can't see her though. Rosie? What's it all? Trying to keep me up? Yeah, not you necessarily. Had your shower? I'll wash my hair instead. You know, Clive, I'm feeling a bit tired after that brandy. <laughs> yeah, we'll have a little siesta then. No, don't do that. Why not? I'm scared of the dark. What's she up to? What? He's trying it on with her. What are you doing? I'm going in. Deacon will kill you. I'm not going to let that scumbag do what he likes to just so Search can get an easy ride. Eddie! Clive. Clive, please. This is too quick. Oh, you're beautiful, Rosie. You're killing me. Wait, Clive. Come on, Rosie. Teddy, he's seen me. I don't let him in, then. Decide what you want, Rosie, okay? If you want to get on board, wear something nice. You'll be at 58 and go on road 8.30. And if you do decide to come, make sure he's not part of the deal. Understand me? Yeah, I understand. I'm sorry, Clive. Oh, what's he doing here? What happened? Uh, nothing happened. Well, it didn't look like nothing. He had a go. Yeah, and you let him. Eddie, back off. I wasn't seducing him. I didn't think... It got out of control. That's why I went to the window like that. I was trying to let you know I needed help. You won't listen, will you? You just... You think I'm some thick plot? No, Ed. Look. Listen, Bellman wants me to meet Rushkoff tonight. Oh, well, you got what you wanted then. I can't. I don't know why you're so bloody furious. I've never been so pleased to see anyone in my whole life. Come here. You're right, OK. I didn't think you'd come on like that. I dropped my guard. Where's the brandy? Well, I'm here now, eh? <laughs> Let me take you away from all this. You were given specific orders to take things slowly with Bellman. Well, he was the one who pushed it, Gov. And you? Should never have got in there without getting the OK from Liz or me first. Well, there wasn't time. Bellman was making the running go. He didn't give me a chance to say no. I really needed Eddie's help. I was trying to signal him. You should never have let it get that far in the first place. I didn't anticipate he'd come on like that. Really? 
In spite of the fact that he chatted you up all last night in the pub and you were alone in the bedroom with him? Gov, he was showing me the room and things suddenly escalated. I tried to stall him, give myself time to think, but... Well, neither of you been doing much of that lately. I should stick you both back on school patrol where you belong. Look, all this is my fault, not Eddie's. He was bailing me out. I lost control of the situation. I made a mistake. Several, actually. I learnt my lesson, Gov. She can cry off the meeting. There's no real harm to her. Not sure if D.I. have to see it like that. Eddie and Rosie were asked to start the process of reconciliation. That's more or less what they've done. Deacon. All right, someone will come and get him. D.I. Hadfield's here. Liz, will you go and get him and I'll see you in the incident room in five minutes? Yes, Gov. Well, off you go. They look pretty tight. Oh, yeah, well, it's only a matter of time now. Vicky don't seem to like it, does she? She had a good word to say about Rosie. Well, that's because she's had her eye on Eddie since the day she walked in here. Oh, I hadn't noticed. I think they make a really nice couple. I prefer to be pulled out right now. I've had enough of Clive to last me a lifetime. Don't wind yourself up. I should have listened to you in the first place. Oh, true. Rosie, you did really well. If we weren't off the op, everyone would be pinning medals on your chest. I let my brain go to sleep. First time for everything. Be a relief to get back to uniform. Yeah, yeah, you can come out with me. I'll show you the sights of Sun Hill. I think I'm going to die of excitement. Are we in serious trouble, Gov? Detective Inspector Hadfield wants to know if Rosie will volunteer to stay on the op. What? He thinks you're in too deep to pull you out without warning off Rushkov. He's just persuaded his governor that he can't do without you being on board. You will have protection, Rosie. There'll be officers in there with you. What exactly do they want me to do? But basically, what they want to do is wire you up, send you in to meet Rushkov tonight as planned. See if we can get him to incriminate himself. OK, this is it. The mic can go wherever you like, but Daniel Brown's normally the safest. And you put the end with the transmitter somewhere comfortable where it won't notice. Not easy with the kind of wardrobe I've got. Try it here. Is that it? Yeah, it's OK. Now, the important thing to remember is, don't forget it's there. If you feel the tape moving or the mic, head straight for the ladies and sort it out. Definitely. Don't want it dropping out in your drink. <laughs> <laughs> you fit? Yep. I'm ready. OK, you sure about what we need, yeah? Rushkov has to admit he's importing heroin and wants to employ me to courier it. Right, we'll be listening to everything you hear and say. We'll have Carol and Nigel in the room with you. As soon as we get that, we'll be in. It'll all be over. Easy job. Sure your mic's working? Tested it twice. You look fantastic. Yeah. Thanks, Ed. Right, showtime. Eddie, you're with us. Rosie, you're with us. Catch you later. Where to, Liz? Home would be nice. Cheers. Right. I'm going to be back at my office later this evening. So if it's okay, I'd like to get straight down to business. Sure. We're talking about a job, yeah? Correct. I'll leave you two to talk. Life tells me you are a smart girl. No trouble with the law, no criminal record. Is that right? That's right. Good. Have you got a drug habit? No. Everybody does something. I smoke a bit of grass, a drink, but... Speak any languages? English, just about. Schoolgirl French. 
It's not essential. Can I ask a question? You can ask. What's the job? International courier. What am I, courier? I'm sorry to interrupt me, Carl. Your girl thinks she's just seen an unwelcome face in the crowd. What? Okay, no problem. We'll continue the office. Rosie and I will finish our drinks and follow on. Okay, see the office. Something. Maybe I know the policeman is looking out for drug dealers. Nothing to worry about. Where's his office? Docklands. Well, we get people out of All units from base uh, receiving. We've got a problem. A place like this. Are you sure you want me along? She sounds jumpy. Officers on the plot have shown out. Targets are coming out. Stand by for instructions. What well, hate if he does with Rascal? And what happens if he's sussed her? Well, it doesn't sound like he has. Well, the greater the risk, the greater the reward. We'll blow this job if you're going down. Well, I'm concerned for the safety of our officer here. It's her show. I think we need to make a decision. We made mine, Chris. Unless your girl calls for help, we stick with her. Bellman's out, going towards his vehicle. Drink up, we'll have to go. I'd like to know the bottom line, Mr Rushkoff. The bottom line? What am I crossing international borders with and what do I get for it? Highly valuable substances. I don't want to be taken for an idiot. No, do I? Look, Clive told me you needed someone quickly and I think I can do this for you. We must go now. Unless I know exactly what I'm being employed to carry and where I'm going, I'm leaving now, Mr Rushkoff. Okay. Heroin from Budapest. A thousand pounds a trip, plus clothes and expenses. You can think about it on the way to my office. Let's go. Follow me. Mr. Bruchkoff. Police, can you stay where you are, please? Hey. All right, mate. Mikhail Bruchkoff. Right. You as well, miss. Oh, to you, you bitch. That's enough. Eh? What's it? Slag. Just get in my car. Well, Rose, but I, I must say it again. Please don't. <laughs> it's been, it's been fantastic working with you. You never stop, do you? Stop what? Taking the mick. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm dead serious. You're never really serious about anything, are you, Eddie? <laughs> I'm serious about you. Since when? I mean it. Get me another one. Your wish is ever... Stop! You wear me out just listening to you wittering on. Cheers. 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 Good result. Let's hope so. You got the man on tape, didn't you? Well, as long as Belmont can be persuaded to cooperate. With his testimony and what we've got on tape, should be plenty. Well, send Rosie in, Gov. She'll roll him over in seconds. <laughs> Not a bad idea. <laughs> hey, Rosebud, over here. It's a good point. Charge your glasses. We've got a toast to propose. The toast is... Eddie and Rosie. Rosie and Eddie. They might not have seen eye to eye at the start, but I'm sure you'd all agree they've made the perfect couple. Yeah. Then let's see them kiss and make up. Oh, fuck. <laughs> no, we want to see a kiss. We want to see oh, come on. We all want to see a happy ending. Oh, come on, kiss. We want to see a kiss. Please, kiss. <laughs> Everyone wants to see a kiss. Do you want to see a kiss? Yes, yeah. we want to see a kiss. Oh, come on, we want to no see a kiss. No film in the ending. camera. A one, two, two three, three, four, five, five. Six, seven, yeah! Oh, yeah. for words. Never. Well done, you two. I need a gym, excuse me. Excellent, yeah. So, is this the start of something new then? Probably not. <laughs> I know. It's on him, it's Completely exhausted. I'm not surprised. It's fun, though. Yeah. I think I'll just take off quietly, leave the lads to the curry or whatever. All right, then. Be back about nine-ish for the debrief tomorrow. Sure, see you tomorrow. OK, well done. <laughs> Where's Rosie going? Home. you up to now? Uh, I thought we could do something later. Like what, Ed? Game of crazy golf? Oh, I want more of those killer kisses. Well, not tonight, though, yeah? 
I'm about to pass out on my feet. I won't let you fall. You really take liberties, don't you, Ed? I'm a man possessed with desire, Rosebud. I can't sleep at night. Well, I can. Just so teach me. Teach you what? Take me home. Show me how you do it. Good night, Ed. One more kiss. Eddie. It's just the one. Myself to more trouble, Anne. Sure, and you could rubbish this officer's career as well. Are you honestly telling me it could never have gone further? I look me in the eye and say that. You look a bit rough, you're all right. I'm okay. Are you planning to hold that crap over me for the rest of eternity? You're scared now. I want to know what you're going to do, Rosebud. 